darkness. You open your eyes and see a bright light. Silhouettes of people seem to be flashing around. Your eyes get used to the light and you look around. You're in a hospital. Doctors in white protective suits and gas masks are standing around you. How do you feel? One of them asks. You don't remember what happened. You scratch your head and hear a strange scraping sound. You look at your palm. It's made of glass. Your whole body is covered with glass. The doctors say there was an accident, but you don't remember anything. You get out of bed and notice the whole floor is covered with a thick layer of fluff. This is necessary to save you from breaking your skin against the hard floor. It's difficult for you to move around. You feel fragile. Any contact with objects leaves scratches on your body, and they burn. Doctors offer you some mashed potatoes, but you aren't hungry. You want to know what's going on and why all the people here are wearing gas masks. They say you accidentally got to the landfill, where scientists were carrying out tests with sand, fire, and radiation. For some reason, you managed to enter the testing ground, and your body has changed. Everyone in the building is wearing gas masks and protective suits, since any kind of contact with you can be dangerous. Now you're in a special institution. Scientists and doctors from all over the world are going to study you. You just want to go home and see your parents and friends. The doctor says it's impossible now. You need to be examined so that they can figure out the potential of your abilities. Everything will be fine. He adds, but his voice sounds strange. They find out how this glass is interconnected with your body cells. For example, a mug falls on your foot. Now your skin there is cracked, but after a few hours, the crack disappears and your foot becomes smooth again. Your organs, bones, and soft tissues are normal. Only the skin has acquired the properties of glass. You can also make your glass skin transparent at will. It allows you to see your muscles. Now that looks scary. You're under constant medical supervision. Almost no one talks to you or shows their faces. You're nervous because there are no windows anywhere. The plants are artificial, and every night your room gets locked with a magnetic lock. You move very carefully, afraid of breaking off a piece of your skin. The scientists promise they're going to solve this problem. They put you on a stretcher, tie you up, and take you somewhere. The doctor claims he knows how to make you less fragile, but you have to trust him. They bring you to a dark room. The doctor asks you to keep your eyes closed throughout the operation. You look around and see huge stoves. People in gas masks are going to shove you there. You ask them not to do this. You don't mind remaining brittle. The scientists put you in a cast iron chamber. You're screaming. There are flames around you. You close your eyes. It's getting hotter and hotter. The fire envelops you completely. It's like you're inside a volcano, but you don't feel any pain. After a few minutes, the flames disappear. Cold air starts blowing on your body from the walls. The researchers pull you out of the oven. You ask the doctor to untie you. You can do it yourself, he says. You strain your muscles and easily tear the straps. You stand on the floor and feel incredible strength in your body. The doctor says that now you're made of tempered glass. It means you're stronger than concrete and some metals. During the entire day, you're testing your renewed skin. You can easily break down walls and withstand any damage. Fire, arrows, hammers, nothing can crack your skin. At the end of the day, the doctors follow you to your room. At this moment, the alarm goes off. They forgot to close the door and run away to the source of the commotion. You get out of bed and walk into the hallway. The whole building is flashing with red lights. Loud sirens are blaring all over the place. The elevator doors open, and several people in gas masks run out. You get to the nearest office and hide there. They run past. You're looking around the room. It seems to be a laboratory. There are ampules, instruments, and other scientific stuff everywhere. There are also countless X-ray pictures on the walls. You find a small flashlight and put it in your pocket. Then you notice some documents on the table. On the first page, you see your photo. You look through the file but can't read anything. Instead of letters, there are strange symbols on the page. It looks like some unknown language. Someone grabs you from behind. It's a young girl. She's crying and asking for help. Her tears are dripping on your hands. Scientists come into the office and lead the girl away. Run away from here! She screams before disappearing behind the corner. You look at one of the doctors. What is this place? You ask. Please go back to your room. The doctor replies politely. 
You leave the office and notice a strange smell. It's your hands. They smell like gasoline. It must be the tears of that girl. Was she crying fuel? You go to bed and decide that tomorrow you'll escape from this terrible place. You're nervous, and at this moment, something happens to your body. You look at your hand and see your reflection. Your skin has turned into a mirror. Oh, great. Another superpower. You reach into your pocket to pull out the flashlight and find a card to the magnetic lock. That girl must have put it in your pocket. She probably stole it from the doctors. Now you just have to find and save her. You work out on a treadmill and ask to visit the bathroom. The doctors are waiting for you behind the door. You wash your hands and look at yourself in the mirror. You have an idea. You switch on your mirror abilities, stand next to the sink, and merge with the bathroom mirror. You're waiting. The doctors, still in their gas masks, burst into the room. They don't notice you. After saying something in an unknown language, they leave. Suddenly, one of them returns. He looks at his reflection in the mirror right into your face. Luckily, he doesn't notice you. In a moment, he goes away. After a while, you also get out and run down the corridor. You hear voices behind you. You turn your skin into a mirror again and hide around the corner. A group of scientists run past. Now you're heading the other way. You run through a long corridor, but see a dead end. Without hesitation, you punch through the wall and find yourself in the main hall. There are a lot of closed rooms with people here. Someone covered in flames is walking inside a fireproof room. You see a guy behind another door. Instead of hair, he has plants growing on his head. There are people with weird superpowers everywhere. You use the magnetic card to open all the doors, but no one leaves their cells. Why did you do it? You don't know yet! Asks an old lady with lanterns instead of eyes. In one of the cells, you find the girl who gave you the magnetic card. You ask her to run away with you, but she just looks at you and shakes her head no. At this moment, the alarm goes off again. The doors are closing. You run out of the hall and find yourself in a long, dark corridor. You close the door and break the lock. It's dark here. You turn the flashlight on and direct the beam at your body. It reflects and illuminates the entire corridor like a powerful night lamp. You walk further and notice another light source. It's a window. Finally, you run as fast as possible. You're approaching the small window leading to freedom. Your pursuers break out the door and scream something to you. You can't hear them. You only think about escape. The window is getting closer. The light of the outside world becomes brighter. You clench your fist to break the glass. There are still a few steps left, and you stop. Your eyes fill with horror. Your whole body begins to tremble. What you see outside the window can't fit in your head in any way. You're looking at a huge asteroid belt. The lights of an unknown purple planet. The bright searchlights of a space station. You realize that you're not on Earth. You're inside a huge spaceship, very far from home. You may be on the other side of the galaxy. These beings, whatever they are, have taken you from Earth to conduct experiments on you. You're so shocked that you lose consciousness. Darkness. You're finally coming to your senses. You see several people in white protective suits. You don't know where you are and don't remember anything. How do you feel? The doctor asks. Your whole body is covered with glass. What is this place? You're inside a huge spaceship, very far from home. A bright flash blinds you. You see some people in protective suits and gas masks when you open your eyes. There are strange scientific devices around you. What's happened to me? A masked scientist silently pats you on the shoulder. But then you see another hiding a scanner in the folder labeled Memory Processing. Hey, what's that thing? What did you do to me? You try to get up, but realize that your arms and legs are tied to the table, and your head is secured with straps. Panic overwhelms you, but then you hear a calm and warm voice. Good morning, Sky. Let me go. Hush, boy. Calm down. Everything's good. Well, you got into trouble yesterday. Colleagues, why did you tie him down like that? He's not some monster, right? The scientists set you free, and the man in the white robe continues to look at you with a wide smile. 
My name is Dr. Merville. I assure you that you are absolutely safe. You got involved in a horrible experiment, and we've saved you. What about the glass all over my body? Can I get my skin back? Sure. Today, my colleagues will create special medicine for you. It will take a bit of time, but in the evening, you'll look the same as before. And tomorrow, we'll help you get home. In the meantime, my colleagues will escort you to your room. You need to rest. Phew, it looks like you can finally breathe out. It seems that you got lucky, and these guys only want what's best for you. Dr. Merville's watch beeps. See you later, Sky. As you walk down the hall to your room, you think of home and how, soon, these friendly scientists will take you there. Your father must be going crazy because you haven't been home for some days. Suddenly, a ventilation grate falls from the ceiling directly on the head of one of the masked scientists. Two strangers, a guy and a girl, jump out of the ventilation shaft. The guy is pointing his hand right at you. Next to his palm, a purple ball appears. It looks like a clump of energy. The guy shoots this ball, and it goes through you. You hear an electrical discharge sound behind your back. When you look around, you see that the scientists have sparks flying out of their eyes. Their heads start to move randomly, and they break off and fall to the floor. It turns out that the friendly scientists have been robots all along. What's going on? Oh no, no, come on guys, you promised to take me home. You clench your hand into a fist to punch the strangers. Who are you, and what do you want? One word, Claire, and I'll finish him. This big guy looks scary. He's ready to fight with you. Calm down, Bob. Sky, listen, they've all lied to you. I can help you get rid of the glass skin. Don't you remember me? No, should I? You two don't look too friendly. You're sure you're seeing these guys for the first time. Tears appear in the girl's eyes, and you smell gasoline. This smell feels very familiar to you, but you can't remember it, no matter how hard you try. Trust me, we'll show you everything. You don't know why, but you take her hand. Claire leads you to a door. Her tears fall on the lock. Then, she snaps her fingers and sets it on fire. The door opens. You climb onto a chair and see a conference room. Look over there. You'll understand everything. Just be quiet. You hear a familiar voice again. It comes from the ventilation shaft. It's Dr. Merville. The scientists and doctors who are taking care of you are gathered at a round table. At the head of the table is Dr. Merville. Gentlemen, we are at the home stretch. Tomorrow, after the last phase of the experiment is finished, we will receive a squad of people with superpowers, and with their help, we will finally be able to seize power on Earth. Suddenly, several scientists run into the conference room and whisper something in Merville's ear. Are you out of your mind? Find them! Now! You can't let them escape! It turns out that this good-natured doctor just wants to use you, and you're just a guinea pig for him. But how is that even possible? Why? Bob, help him faster! Bob touches your forehead with his palm. Your head starts hurting a lot. You see your memories flashing in front of your eyes. Now you remember the view from the space station window, Claire, and that you're being held here by force. Oh, I remember now, Claire, Sky. We have to get back to Earth, and fast. My dad will find a way to stop Dr. Merville. I know how to get to the docks. We can steal a ship and fly home. But first, we'll save all the people brought here. We can't leave them in trouble. Sky, listen, they have thousands of robots, and there are only three of us. It won't work out. Guys, look what we can do now. Bob has just deactivated the robots with some unbelievable electromagnetic ball. You've easily burned the locks. We must unite and use our new powers against them. You're right, Sky. We're different people now. Okay, Claire, can you break into the control center and open the cells? Bob and I will release everyone, and then we'll get back to the ship. Yep. Now you have an escape plan, but as soon as you exit the room, you see several dozen robots. They're pointing blasters at you. You've been caught. <laughs> Did you think that a few naive teenagers could beat me? Well, that's even better. 
We'll conduct the final phase of the experiment right now. The girl will be the first. You see robots bring a giant laser rig to the lab and point it at Claire. You have no idea about the mistake you made when you decided to experiment on us. You're furious and try to break free, but your skin starts to crack all over your body. You'd better watch this, Skye. She will suffer because of you. I told you to sit quietly in your ward. You're furious. Blue cracks cover your skin. You rip the straps, but the robots hold you tight. Dr. Merville turns on the laser cannon. The laser starts buzzing. In a few seconds, Claire will be hurt. These naive teenagers will show you what they're now capable of. You close your eyes and imagine jumping off a tree. Your mother is there to catch you. She hugs you and says, You're my hero, Sky. You will always be. You open your eyes. Your heart beats even faster, and you manage to find the strength to push the robots away. Ah! The laser does hurt you, but your cracks heal quickly. You see how your right arm turns into something even more solid for some reason. What's this? Where is such a bright light coming from? Is your arm turning into a diamond? Yes! You see the robots running towards you again, but they get torn apart by your powerful hits. The angrier you get, the more your whole body hardens, and the more diamond chips cover it. Sky, stop! Try to calm down, or your whole body will turn into a diamond, and that's all Merville needs. Claire is right. The stronger your negative emotions are, the more changes occur in your body. Dr. Merville hastily makes his way to the exit. You chase after him, but he disappears behind the heavy doors. You set your friends free. Save the others before the robots get to them. I'll try to get to the control center and open the cells. Then we'll meet at the ship dock. Claire, be careful. I won't forgive myself if something happens to you. You'll find me. But how? Tears appear in Claire's eyes, and she runs away, leaving behind droplets of gasoline. They light up and start smoldering a second later, leaving a trail behind the girl. That way, you can go back to Claire. Sky, hurry! You and Bob make your way through dozens of robots toward the cells. Bob, there are too many of them. Now touch it! Are you sure? You touch the clump of purple energy with your diamond hand. The ball passes through your hand and separates into many balls, which Bob then sends straight into the robots, making them shut down. Wow, it's great! Yes, like real superheroes! Meanwhile, Claire runs to the control center. Two robots block her path. They grab her, but Claire's eyes start glowing. The robots' eyes light up too, and they stop. Suddenly, they begin to fight each other, and Claire runs past them. She hits the needed button, and the sign, All Cells Are Open, appears on the monitor. You and Bob see the cell doors in the hallway open. An elderly lady peeks out of the cell. Instead of one of her eyes, she has a bright spotlight. Grandma, we need to run! Oh, it's my dog! Hedgehog, come here! Everybody, follow me! We'll take you home! Several robots are waiting for you in the hallway. You hear the dog barking behind your back. Hedgehog, go! Deal with these pieces of iron! You turn your head and see that your dog is backing away and then jumping right into the robots, transforming into a porcupine in flight. It pushes them apart with its tail and knocks them down. Good boy! But we have to come up with a new nickname for you. You've almost reached your goal. You come up to a giant door leading to the docks. We've made it! What a great team we make! Wait, where's Claire? Maybe she's been captured! We have to hurry, Sky. I'm not going anywhere without her! Suddenly, a terrible sound pierces your ears. Your head hurts. You start writhing and fall to the floor. At this moment, Dr. Merville appears, carrying a large emitter. I'm sorry, Sky. He followed the fire traces I left for you. You think you are all superheroes now, huh? And how do you like my newest invention? I offer you a deal. You can go on fighting, and then all of you will be finished in no time. Or I will open the door and let you go. But you, Sky, will stay with me. Sky, don't do this. We can blow the door. We'll figure something out. 
You can risk it and run, but everyone will get hurt. But if you surrender, you'll never see your home again. I agree. Turn this thing off. You have to go to Dr. Merval. And now you'll forget everything that's happened. I'll turn you into a diamond that will help me take complete control of Earth. Dr. Merville presses some buttons, and you cover your face with your hand. At that moment, the whole corridor lights up with a bright flash. The beam gets refracted inside your diamond arm and darts back, hitting Dr. Merville. Dr. Merville suddenly changes. Now, he looks like an ordinary man with a kind face. Oh, everybody. Hi. What's going on here? I can't believe it. Now, he has lost his memory. Sky, it's our chance. How do we open this door now? Suddenly, Grandma gets to the front. The light coming from her eye gets more focused. She looks at the door, and in the area where the light hits, a passage to the other side appears. You and your team pass through the door. The light goes off. The passage closes behind your back. Now, there's nothing to stop you from going home. We're going home! Now, I need to remember everything my dad taught me. You're flying through dark space, finally free. Bob and Claire are nearby. The hedgehog lies at your feet. Have you all seen our super grandmother? How did you even manage to get us through the door? Grandma winks. Everybody laughs. You saved us, Captain Sky! I'm sorry I was such a coward. Well, nothing would have worked without your help. Wait, did you say Captain? But of course, Captain! Does everybody agree? All your new crew members smile and nod. You're my hero. I hope you didn't think I could just leave you there. You reach for Claire and kiss her on the cheek. Your hand suddenly turns back from diamond to glass. You know, more than anything, I want to get my skin back. Did you say you knew how to do this? My friend is a talented scientist. When we get back, she'll help you. Well, I hope she's not a robot. <laughs> who could get through here? Dad? Oh, of course. You're the only one who could make interspace calls. Son, are you okay? You see uniformed military officers standing behind your father. Yeah, we're flying home. I need to tell you so much. I'm happy to hear it, but you can't return to Earth. The call drops. You panic and begin to press the buttons. Dad, wait! Why? Suddenly, you realize that you're all alone in outer space, and there's no way to get home. Bob, check the coordinates. Any sign of approaching Earth? Yes, we're halfway there, but we were ordered not to go back. Well, I'm bad at subordinating to orders. Soon, we'll see blue skies again. Maximum speed forward. Let's hope we don't meet the black hole. Sky! Meteorites! Heading straight towards us! Shields on! Okay, the trajectory states they're on a path towards us at 60,000 miles per hour. That gives us some time. Bob, divert all power to the thrusters. Buckle up, everyone. We're in for a bumpy ride. The shields are 70% and falling fast, Sky. Redirect all shield energy to the laser. Are you sure? We'll have no defense. We don't have time. Done. Move away. We need to get back home. Yeah! Bob, high five. Sky, look at that. Oh, no, no, no. Not the black hole. Do we still have power? It's all depleted. We have five minutes until the gravity field pulls us into the black hole. What should we do, Captain? Attention team. John, get the power supply out, fast. Bob, throw an energy charge right into it. Claire, stand by for ignition. Come on, please start. Three, two, one, go! The engines are on. But why is the ship not moving? It's too late. We're already on the event horizon. The point of no return. There's not enough engine power to overcome its gravity. We're too far in. If I get broken from overloads, you won't. I'm here. Hold 
on tight. Scum! Is everyone okay? Grandma, give us some light. It's not so scary out here at all. From here, we can fly into the future. Look, the light of the whole universe is narrowing. Grandma, try to reach the light to that point, and then turn on your teleport. We're already in the heart of the black hole. The teleport isn't working. Now how do we get out of here? I have no idea. I doubt anyone's ever been here before. I hope someone responds to our signal. Sky, time goes by differently here. For every second here, a day could pass, or even a week. While we're here, years may pass on Earth. What was that? Buckle up! Alright. Guys, it's Earth! We're home! Claire? Bob? Grandma? John? Where are you? Oh, they must have gone for help. Well, Hedgehog? Given that we just flew through a black hole, we could have traveled into the future. Oh, hello. Oh, uh, what year is it? 2250. What? Hedgehog, look how far we traveled. Bob's going to be so happy. Sorry, do you have any bread and water? I have bananas and eucalyptus leaves. What? You eat leaves here? Yes. Very nutritious. I'll take your word on that. Hey, have you seen anyone else around here? I saw a girl and a big guy. They went to the waterfall. Come on, I'll show you. Claire, Bob, guys! Grandma's teleporter worked after all! Guys, the year is 2250. Can you believe it? Well, at least we're on Earth. Quiet, Hedgehog, it's okay. Where's Grandma and John? They're resting over there in that cave. Oh, tell me how to get to the nearest town. We need to find parts for the ship. There's a town nearby, but it's getting dark. We need to find shelter and wait out the night. Otherwise, you will be in great danger. No, no, we have to go now. Guys, let's fix the ship and get back to our time. Sky, listen to him. He knows what he's talking about. Look, the sun is going down. We've got to get to the cave quickly. Guys, what's wrong with you? Have you had too many leaves or something? Ugh, whatever. Guess I'll go to town alone. Hedgehog, the guys are acting really strange. Ugh, why is it so cold? Oh, no, 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 no! guys are right. We need to explore this island first. It's freezing out there. Let's build a fire. Claire, can you help? Um, I left my lighter on the ship. But you have gasoline tears. John, can you give us some twigs for the fire? What's the matter with you guys? Grandma, Bob, don't eat the leaves anymore. They turn people into weirdos. What's going on? Let go of me! my friends who are you and why is the earth inhabited by lizard people who said that we're on earth <laughs> 